My name is Henry Lieberman at the Atari Cambridge Research Center, and I'd like to tell you about a program that I've been working on called Tinker. Tinker is an interactive programming environment for Lisp that allows you to write programs from examples by presenting an example to the computer, working out the steps of the procedure on the example, and generalizing a program. The example that I'd like to show you is from the domain of video games. I, we're, we'll use Tinker to develop a program for Atari's first popular video game, Pong. And we will write the, the program for the Pong game by demonstrating to Tinker various situations that can occur during the game, showing Tinker how to handle these situations, and showing Tinker how to distinguish between the various types of situations that might occur. First, here's an advanced look at the Pong game we're trying to produce. The rest of the tape will show how we can put this program together using Tinker. We'll be both writing the code for the game and testing out the game from the game player's point of view at the same time. Now we'll define a bounce ball function that takes the x and y coordinate of the ball and the y coordinates of the paddles. Since the ball starts out in the center of the screen, there's no collision with anything else. So we get a function bounce ball, which just returns the symbol no collision. Using the mouse, we'll move the ball so it collides with one of the walls and show Tinker what to do in this case. It's a new example for the bounce ball function. And we'll tell it to bounce off the bottom wall, which is represented at, by a normal vector of 180 degrees, perpendicular to the wall in the direction of the bounce. In this case, what we want the ball to do is reflect its heading off the wall. Now Tinker asks us, what's the difference between the case where there is a collision with the wall and the first case where there's no collision? And the predicate we give Tinker to distinguish between these two cases tests the x and, takes the y coordinate of the ball and sees whether it's close enough to the bottom of the board. This results in a new bounce ball procedure that says if the ball is close enough to the bottom of the board, then bounce it off the bottom wall. Otherwise, there's no collision. We showed how to, do, to um, check for collisions against the top and bottom walls and the left and right paddles. We now have a sub-game of Pong that just consists of moving the ball around and checking for collisions. So I'm going to run just that part of it. So we're going to be in a loop that bounces the ball, that runs the bounce ball function, and then tells the ball to move forward. Well, so far, everything looks great. So now we set up the situation where the ball is against the wall but didn't hit the paddles. In this case, we want one of the players to score. So we tell the scoreboard to increment the score of the player who won that particular point. The score used to be Henry 0, Greg 0. Now it's Henry 1, Greg 0. To begin the next round of the game, <coughs> we move the ball back to the center of the screen. And just for fun, let's change the heading of the ball to be a random number so that the ball goes flying off in some random direction every time a point is scored. and we can see the heading of the ball change. Now what Tinker wants to know is what's the difference between the case where it hits the right paddle and the case where it hits the right wall without hitting the paddle. So we tell it to check to see if the distance between the paddle and the ball is less than the size of the ball. And now here's the finished Pong game in action. Up, oh, Henry returned the ball. Greg hit it too. Henry got it just in the nick of time. So did Greg. So far, both of the players are pretty good at this point. I guess I really should have had it beep when it uh, scored a point. Uh, and there's a little bug. <laughs> we didn't uh, say we uh, didn't check for the case that the head, the ball might bounce back and forth uh, 
forever without hitting any of the paddles. We could put in a check for that particular case by using this as another example and going through the new example procedure.